Hello, I'm Barbara Elman, and I'm a painter and a teaching artist at Lincoln Center. And welcome to today's pop-up classroom. The subject of today's lesson is all about still life. And still life is a type of drawing, painting, or sculpture that has to do with capturing the look of inanimate objects. And what we mean by that is inanimate means totally still. And that's how it gets its name, still life. So you can see, um, these are some of the objects that I've been thinking about drawing. None of them are moving. They're all quite static and still. Um, for today's still life lesson, you're going to need just a few simple supplies. You're gonna need some paper. I have a stack of it here, but you're gonna need at least four sheets. And this is just regular eight and a half by 11 inch paper. You're gonna need a pencil and you're gonna need an eraser, I think. So these are the things that I'd like to go off and gather now. You can turn off and pause this video and then come back. So I'm beginning to see which objects seem to go together. Um, I have these things from my kitchen. I have um, some bird-like things. They seem to be related, this egg with this owl and this little bird. I have some Native American objects. These three that go together. Oh, this goes with my gourds, I would say. And so does this. Oh, and then I have three toys, stuffed animals. I bet many of you have stuffed animals. And they begin to go together. Now, what I've got are objects of many different sizes. So I have a very tall object with sort of a medium height object and then a very small object. So I'm thinking small, medium, and large in all of these different groups. And that I think is going to be really important. So what I'm gonna ask you to do now is to gather your three objects that are interesting shapes, different contours, that's the outside shape of an object, that is, comes in small, medium, and large, the three things that you pick, um, and that you think that you would enjoy drawing today. So I selected these three objects, they all come from my kitchen. And before I start to draw my still life, I like to practice arranging and rearranging my objects so I make the most interesting composition. And I would like it if, while I'm working with my three objects, if you would work with your three objects. So there are many different ways of positioning three things on a table in front of you. And um, I am thinking about the fact that they are in, they could be positioned in size order. And I'm gonna go like this. So now it's going from the tallest to the medium to the small or the shortest. You're probably seeing it this way, from the shortest to the tallest. And um, that's gonna be what I'm going to record with a sketch. Now, the reason I record these different arrangements with sketches is because I want to be able to come back and figure out, well, what was my best arrangement? What did I think was the most interesting one that I would really like to concentrate on careful drawing? Um, so the first thing I do is I draw a large dark rectangle. Um, I've drawn two of them because we're going to be doing three sketches. Um, and each one of these rectangles equals really uh, the whole piece of paper. Because we're only gonna have two minutes to do our sketching, I wanna sketch within a much smaller area. But to draw that rectangle is gonna help me really place those objects in relationship to one another and in relationship to the larger piece of paper when I start to draw my still life. So I highly recommend trying this out. So I'm gonna do a quick sketch and, and give myself about two minutes to do this and to record 
these three objects in the space. And you're gonna see that I'm moving my pencil very swiftly. Oh, I'm gonna put in that shelf down at the bottom, that little table edge. And I'm gonna put this one in too. Um, I'm gonna move as quickly as I can to get in all of the objects. And basically remember that I'm just trying to record, I'm just trying to record wh uh, where the objects are in space. Um, I'm not gonna do any details. I just wanna make sure that I know where the vase goes, um, where the glass goes, how close is it to the edge of my paper? Not very close. And let's see, this goes here. There's a space in between. It's about the same location on the table, meaning horizontally. And, oh, don't forget that it's shorter. And, um, and now this last bowl, let's see here. It's a very odd shape, this bowl, because it was made by hand. Okay, and then this goes here like this, and cuts across here, and now I can even have a little second to erase these extra lines that I don't need, and this doesn't dip quite so far as that. Okay, that's going to be good enough. So when I look at this, I'm seeing three shapes, sort of one plus one plus one. They have spaces in between, but they are looking like almost they're in a kind of marching across the picture. That's my first idea, and that's fine, but I'd like to try some other types of groupings. So. This first drawing was really like one object plus another object plus another object with space in between. And in my drawing, I have space on either end. I want to try other ways of using my three objects. Now I could group them. So I have like two and a space in between and one. Think about different directions that they might be facing in or I could put these two with a space and one. There are lots of different ways that I can make smaller sort of subgroups out of my three. These two and one. So I want you to be moving your objects around and make a different composition with two objects together and one object on its own with a space in between. And I'm now going to settle on my composition for my second quick sketch. I'm going to start again the same way I did. We're going to do it in two fast minutes. I hope you've got an arrangement of one object and two objects together somehow. So it's one plus two or two plus one. And here I go. Let's see, this is sort of where my table ends. Proportions are tricky. And um, in still life drawing, as in many other kinds of drawing, it really, really shows up. Oh, that's a little wide. So let me just go in a little darker there. Let's extend this this way. Uh, I'm finding that this Picture is my most difficult shape. 
Oh, that's a little tight there. I'll show you what I'm gonna do afterwards here to kind of fix the edge of my rectangle because I think I need a little bit more space. You know, the more you draw the same objects, the better you get to know them and the better you get to understand the relationships between them. So you can see how I'm correcting my work as I, as I draw. I'm rethinking some of my decisions about proportions, meaning the size of one thing in relation to the size of another. And the, oh my gosh, I wanna really exaggerate this space. This goes back to the bottom of the bowl. It's about here. And I'm gonna make it really come close to the edge because I like the tension of it being close to the edge. Now, I'm gonna make a little erasing here so I remember that I've got this shape is the one that I want, this outside contour on that glass. And I'm gonna put this in a little bit darker and then I'm gonna say, okay, good. So now I have one plus one plus one and I chose two plus one in my second drawing. It could have been one plus two also, but that's not the one I picked. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to a third arrangement. So now I'm gonna go from two plus one to all three objects together. And how am I gonna do that? There are lots of different ways that I could overlap three objects. And as I move them around, they change in terms of which way they face and how they begin to make a group. But I like that it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And so that means in my sketch, they'll probably get larger and larger because I don't want to leave all this space on either side. So I'll be able to really come in close to the objects. Okay, so let's see. I kind of think that I'm gonna go, maybe something, hmm, something like that. So here is my chosen third composition. This is all three objects together. And again, I'm gonna put in that bottom edge that I see. And I'm gonna start with the blue bowl this time because it's a little closer to me. Hmm, but if I make it that tall, I'm gonna be in trouble. So let's see how this is gonna work. Every arrangement changes the still life completely. And so it's important to be able to try a few things out to see what it is that you're really drawn to, what you're gonna enjoy drawing. What you are drawn to, that's funny. Meaning what, what, what you're attracted to. And the more you look, the more you see, like this time I'm really noticing the shadows. Again, I have to make some adjustments to my measuring. My glass got a little wide. It's also looking very different at this angle. Oh, I'm seeing a little triangle of space right here and here as I draw. It's a much more interesting composition, I think, this time, because it's so snug. I like that. This is all practice and experimentation. And um, the more you do it, the better you get at it. So now we should have three sketches. Um, I have them of my objects, you should have them of your objects. Um, and you're going to select which one you'd really like to
try again on a larger piece of paper and really finish it up. Give yourself more than two minutes to do that. But before we do that, I would like to show you an artwork by another artist named William Bailey um, as inspiration. So we'll take a look at that together and then we'll finish up our still lives. So this is the artwork by William Bailey and it's called Soliloquy. I want, since we've been drawing still life objects, I want you to be looking at the different types of objects that he's got in his artwork and think about where in the house he might have found these things. You might also notice that he's thinking about objects of different sizes and shapes. Which one would you refer to as the tallest of the objects? Which one do you think is the smallest of the objects? I also see the big yellow bowl is very, very wide. It's the widest thing in this still life. Let's take a look at how he's arranged these objects in this artwork. Some of them seem to be grouped together, but look very, very closely, and you're gonna see that there are little spaces between some of the objects. In fact, you're gonna also find that there's a very large space between that salt shaker and all of the rest of the objects. So the salt shaker is all by itself. It then looks like there are a couple of objects that are sort of clumped together. And then lastly, there's a very large group that includes two very tall things and the large yellow bowl and the cups and the, uh, the little gray blue bowl. All of these things seem to be like one big group. I want you to think about the color and the feeling of this artwork. Because as you start to work with color, you're gonna to wanna to see how you can create a kind of mood by adding color to your picture. And that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna take this artwork by William Bailey and let it inspire us to finish our artwork of our own design. So I'm gonna be drawing one of my favorite still life arrangements and I hope that you too will be drawing one of your favorites.
Okay, so you saw me finish my drawing with colored pencil and I hope that you're going to uh, use pencil or crayon or watercolor or marker to finish your drawing. Uh, I want to thank you so much for joining me today for Lincoln Center's pop-up classroom and I want to remind you to keep making things. Thank you so much. My name is Barbara Elman. So long for now.